He was stopped by God. He was stopped by God. And what was it that he blinded, you know, by heaven, you know, Acts chapter 9, and uh, down on his knees. And what was it that Saul said? He says, Lord, what would you have me do? Amen. And this was after, amen, the Lord had says, he says, he says, who are, he says, he says, he says, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. I am Jesus whom you persecute. And then he says, Lord, what would you have me do? That word Lord is, is curious, you know. He says, you're attributing to the Lord God Almighty. Right? That's when you saw the revelation of the mighty God in Christ. And then it all came together. He realized, amen, that they weren't preaching something different. Amen. They were just, they were just preaching the very same thing. Praise the Lord. They were preaching the very same thing. So Paul confirmed the doctrine of the apostles uh, and, and again what we have to understand is that as time and years went on Paul had never, Paul had never seen a lot of the apostles he had, he had never met them before never seen them before when he, when he met them for the first time and, and they I mean they, they were kind of you know swap notes as we say he discovered they discovered they were all preaching the very same thing Jesus Christ and Him crucified, God incarnate, they were all preaching the same thing. And there was no contradiction. It's because uh, it was confirmed by the Holy Ghost. Confirmed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat> Can I also say in the next statement, there is no better teacher of divine truth than the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 2.14 where the Bible talks about where uh, the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit because they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. So there's no better teacher of divine truth than the Holy Ghost. And uh, this next part, I'm going to just take just a moment with this because this is, this is, uh, this is an important part. And I want you to, and I want you to get it. And I'm just going to read this part here and then, then I'll break it down for you. The full truth of the word should not be gathered from one scripture, but from the accumulated revelation of all the scriptures which bear witness to this one same truth. Okay? And I do have a, a scripture that goes in, in line uh, with that. And I want to read first. 2 Peter, sorry, chapter 1, verse 20. Known this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Amen. So, one of the things about understanding doctrine about interpreting the Bible correctly the first thing that we have to and I've, I've already mentioned this okay that you you should not gather from you can't just gather from one scripture and and that's it you know uh, to, to build a doctrine you need to accumulate okay you need accumulated revelation from from both Old and New Testament. It's, it's all about joining Scripture with Scripture. Amen. To, to build that truth. I always go with the context method. The context method. Uh, I don't know if, can if I write on the board, will you, will you see it? I'll write on the board there. <laughs> Okay, what you have is you've got text. Context. And you've got great. Great. That's all right, don't worry about that. Okay, you've got. Uh, you've, got you've got text. Okay, that's all right. If you don't see it, that's all right. Text. Context and greater context. 
Okay, three things. Right? Now I want you to repeat them back to me. Repeat them back to me. Text. What's the second one? Oh, don't be shy. No, I'm not. No, I'm, I want you to repeat back what I've already said, okay? We've got text, context, greater context, okay? So the first one is text, I'll give it to you. The second one is context, context. and the third one is greater. Greater context. Thank you for that. By this we mean your text is your scripture. You know, it's like the, the one I read in Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 20 and 21. Okay? Right, that's that's the text. You know when the you know when your pastor gets up and he, he opens the word of the Lord and he reads his text, okay? The text may be one scripture, it may be six, it may be a maybe a portion. And then, then what you have then what you have is you have the context. In other words, what the Bible has to say about that text. Right? That's the context. Okay? What the Bible has to say. What, what the chapter has to say about that. Then you have the greater context. And that simply means, what does the rest of the Bible have to say on what you've just read? Okay? Your text, your context, great context. Okay, you've got your scripture, you've got the chapter, and what does the rest of the Bible have to say in that? This is what I call the context method, and it does work. It does work without fail when you're studying the Bible. When you're putting something together, that's how it should always be, even without thinking. Okay? Now, uh, <clears throat> Okay, do we all have that? Yeah. Yes. Okay, now, can I ask, does everybody understand that? Yes. Does everybody understand that? Okay, that, that is good. We, we will repeat this one again, okay? Because I want you to know, I want you to know this one. Uh, also, uh, here's a question for you, right? Here's a question. Now that we've just discussed Text, context, greater context, right? How do you tell if something is a truth? How do you tell if something is a truth? Who'd, who'd like to share that with me? How do you, how do you tell, how can you tell if something is a person, If something is a truth or a doctrine, how do you tell? If it's a sound doctrine. Say that again, sorry? If it's sound doctrine. If it's sound doctrine, okay, that's good, thank you for that. If it's sound doctrine. Well, let, let me put it to you like this, right? This, this is any subject. How do we know that Jesus' name baptism is the correct formula? Hmm. How do we know? Can somebody tell me? Because it's in the Bible? Because it's in the Bible. Now, is it in the Bible just once? No. No. It's consistently, consistent, consistently throughout the New Testament plan of salvation. That's why we know that baptism in Jesus' name is the correct formula, is because it's consistently there, you know. You know, it, it's and this is what we were talking about, you know, the, the accumulated revelation of all the scripture that bear witness to that one truth. It's like else I can put it to you like this. How do we know that there is only one God? How do we know? The reason is, you tell me. Because it's in the Bible. 
consistently, it's in the Bible. And how do we know that we have to repent of our sins? Is because it's in the Bible, and it's in the Bible consistently. And that's why, you know, we can build a doctrine on these things, is because we can, we can pull Scripture from the Old Testament, we can pull Scriptures from the New Testament, and we can form a wonderful truth. This is, again, this is how we know that inward cleansing or holiness is correct because it's consistently spoken about in the New Testament and also in the Old Testament. Inward cleansing and holiness. And also the second coming of Jesus Christ. How do we know that He's coming again? How do we know? Because it's written in the Bible. It's written in the book consistently. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, I'm going to have to move through this quickly here. Uh, the next portion is truth is always well balanced and sound. The truth is always well balanced and sound. And I think that word well balanced, that that just goes with what we've just been talking about as well. And, and I think, that this, is, this, is, this is my opinion and I, I think it's, it's a good thought here that the Bible does not just mention things like, you know, repentance or holiness or one God. It elaborates on it. It elaborates on it. And I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, with, with Jesus and John the Baptist, both of them preached uh, the message of repentance. But they elaborated on it. For example, if you look at John the Baptist, John the Baptist says, Amen, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. You see, John elaborated. And even when we look at the, the teachings of the Lord Jesus, he elaborated. He explained. Amen. Okay, on to the next one. And I know I'm doing this quickly. Truth, and this is important, truth always exalts Jesus Christ. Always exalts Jesus Christ. An indication or a sign uh, of any cultic group is that you will often find that the leaders have become these exalted messiahs. You know? They, they are exalted messiahs. A lot of times in, in these groups, Jesus Christ is not exalted. Is not exalted. And that's when, you know, mm, I'm away from, okay, you know, this, this, is, this is dangerous. This is dangerous. Any teaching that degrades Christ is erroneous. In, in other words, it's an error. Error. Again, moving on. Truth has a sanctifying effect in the life of a believer. These, these are sentences that are also in your notes. It's an ongoing process by the Spirit and by the Word. I've, I've also got some, some notes here. Uh, you know, when it comes to interpreting the, the Bible correctly, uh, th there's a little thought here. That I, I want you to listen to this one. Listen to this. Always interpret the Bible literally, except where the structure or context indicates that it is symbolic or figurative. Okay? <coughs> Always interpret the Bible literally, except where the structure or the context indicates that it is symbolic or figurative. And as a rule of thumb, as a rule of thumb, just to simplify this, I always remember this one from, from many from, from many years ago. And I want listen to this one. Listen to this. If the literal sense makes good sense, seek no other sense, lest it result in absolute nonsense. Okay? okay. <laughs> right? If the literal sense 
makes good sense, seek no other sense, lest it result in absolute nonsense. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Amen. Okay, then we are almost done there. Uh, just kind of wrapping all of this up. It's important to know the four main divisions of the New Testament. Can anybody, does anybody know what the four main divisions of the New Testament are? Gospel, Gospels, Acts, Acts Epistles, and Revelations or Prophecy. Okay, mm -hmm. so in this we have, we have the, the life of Christ, mm -hmm. we have the history of the church, we have the, the letters that were written to the church, uh, individuals that were already born again and saved, and fourthly, we have the, the revelation of Jesus Christ. We've got the future of the church, what we call prophecy, and the end of the age. Just a couple of other things here, and then we'll be done. Again, this is, this, is all, this is all in your notes, all in your notes. Combine doctrine with practice. Right thinking leads to right living. Do you agree with that? Yes. yes. Okay. Right thinking leads to right living. Scriptural doctrine should result in scriptural holiness. Okay, not, not man-made holiness, I'm talking about scriptural holiness. Of what value is a correct creed without a correct character? Okay. And then we have, again this is, this is quite important, so I, I want to just, you know, make sure I've, I've covered all these bases. And we're almost done. State biblical doctrine in scriptural language. State biblical doctrines in scriptural language. And we will clarify that modernism would have us adopt softened words for sin. So, the Bible uses the word sin, you know, and it uses the strongest possible words. We, humanity, in this day and age, we will come up, you know, man comes along and says, it's a wrong, it's a mistake human weakness you know but we have to we have to name it as you know we, we cannot adopt softened words okay if, if the bible uses the word sin then that's what it is okay so uh, accept the same relative prominence of a doctrine that the bible gives it now uh, by that we just simply uh, mean, you know, uh, accept the same relevant prominence of a doctrine that the Bible gives it. For example, in the, the many, many doctrines and studies throughout the, the Word of the Lord, there are always, isn't it true that there are always some studies or doctrines that just kind of come to your attention? So if I was to ask you, what, what major doctrine would come to your attention? What would you say? What would come to your attention? What, what is more, more prominent? Not better than, but more prominent. What would you actually say? Divine doctrine. Say that again? Divine doctrine. Uh, no, no. What I'm, what I'm talking about is the, the, the different doctrines in the Bible. I'll give you an example. Uh, one that always comes to my mind is the, the second coming of Jesus Christ. That's a doctrine, okay? And that is, that's a prominent feature. It's a prominent study. It's a prominent truth. And the reason is, is because we can see all throughout the New Testament. That's all, the, that's all the disciples talked about. Even when, when they came together, when they met each other, you know, in the, the, the darkest times, they would encourage each other and just say, hang on, you know, the Lord is coming soon. It was, it was, all, it was, it was in the tip of their tongue, you know, the Lord's coming soon, have hope. So, what I'm saying is, accept the same relevant prominence of a doctrine that the Bible gives it. The second coming is a prominent doctrine in the Bible. It's, it's not that we're saying it's any better than... 
We're saying it's prominent, okay? Uh, there, there are more emphasis. There's more, maybe more emphasis on it as well. Uh, another, another one is salvation. Salvation is a prominent doctrine. Eternity is a prominent doctrine. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord to that. Mm -hmm. uh, also, if, if you have this on your notes, I've, I've got some, you know, I'm, I'm using different notes. I've got some additional uh, information on there, but you may have the very same thing. Uh, the importance of Bible doctrine, just to wrap this up, it keeps you from sin, keeps you from backsliding, provides nourishment, keeps you saved, and provides a foundation. And it does not change. It does not change. Can you say amen to that? Amen. amen. Does anybody have any comments or questions in regard to what we've looked at? I hope everything was clear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, please remember that uh, next month, if, again, if, if you're going for full achievement, I don't know all who's actually doing full achievement as yet, but if you are doing full achievement, it is uh, a, a requirement that the, the, the doctrines of, of the Bible, the book that you've been given, uh, is read in the, the, the course of the series. Okay? <clears throat> and there will be some other things that I will actually give you. But read chapter 1 for next month. Read chapter 1 for next month. And mm -hmm. September, uh, we, will, we will teach the doctrine of man. We will teach on the doctrine of man. Okay? Well, folks, thank you for your, your attention. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Mm. We've got that bridge on the water.